Okay, so this is Ringwalk Media. We are over in Joe Gallagher's gym today. We've been lucky enough to catch up with, I've got to get this right because it's the right mouthful, the IBF, the Commonwealth, and the British super middleweight champion, Mark Heffron. Mark, it's great to see you. Yeah, it's great to see you too, Matt. <laughs> and you've just finished a, a bit of a grueling session out there. Yeah. How's it, how is it uh, in camp at the moment? Yeah, camp's been uh, going really well. Uh, I've had some good sparring, working hard as usual, uh, enjoying it, yeah. Yeah, and obviously, back in July, which isn't that long ago, you became obviously all those uh, the champion of all those belts, and yeah. you know it's a mouthful. I'm not going to go through them again. <laughs> I mean, t take us through that. I mean, that that must be an amazing feeling to actually finally become the British champion, especially. Yeah, it was um, my third attempt at the British title. Uh, it's a title that I've I've always wanted to win before moving forward with my career, and um, I finally got the got a good win. Yeah, and talking of the fight, we were actually at the fight, and uh, the first round, you, I think it was about after a minute, you caught him in the right hand, yeah. and went hell for leather. You could see <laughs> Anthony Crawler going mad under the sidelines. Yeah. And did you, did you think, right, I'm going to have him, I'm going to take him out? Yeah, well, I'd, in camp, um, I worked extra hard, and um, I, was, I knew I was fully fit, and ready to uh, for, a good, for a good 12 rounds, so I caught him in the first round, and uh, obviously I tried to get him out of there, but um, Glennis Clark's a good, strong, durable opponent, and. Uh, Stuck in there, took me out off to him. Yeah, he came back at you a little bit in the second, didn't he? Yeah, he did, yeah, he did, yeah. Uh, to be honest, after the first round, I, I took, I, I would say, the second round, I didn't come on, go again, like, it was stupid, I just took my foot off the pedal a little bit and then recovered, and then come back out the third round and stuck it back on him. Yeah, and it was fairly even, I think, fourth round, and then in the fifth, that was it, you sort of caught him again, I think yeah. it was a left, was it a left up or yeah, I think yeah. you got left him. Up, the temple, yeah, left up, climb on the temple, yeah, left up, climb on the temple. That's it, and then he was going, and, and then at that point, you must have known, that's it, I've got him. Yeah, well, uh, I just feel, well, while I was in there with Lennox, um, I hurt him many, many a times, and uh, I just feel like the referee, obviously the referee was in there, and he was close to me, I, feel, I just feel like he's seen enough, and that's why uh, he stopped the fight. Yeah, I mean, like I say, we were there and we definitely think that the referee made the right uh, decision. I know Lennox wasn't yeah. particularly happy about yeah. it, but, you know, he was a bit funny with you afterwards, yeah. wasn't he? Yeah, he was, yeah, well, uh, you see it all the time, like, referees leaving it too late and then the referees get slagged off for it and then, uh, obviously, like, Lennox Clark was, when, when I was in that, I was one punch away from knocking him out proper, do you know what I mean? And, uh, I think it was the, um, the right decision from the referee. Definitely. And that moment when the referee calls it off and you become the British champion, what was that like? Because there was a lot of emotion, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, it was just like, <sighs> finally, I got there. Um, yeah, it was the best feeling in the world. Obviously, after having a little baby girl poppy, yeah. um, it, was, uh, it was the best, yeah, it was one of the best. Superb. And obviously, you know, sadly, at the beginning, just before you came, your mother passed away. Yeah. And that must have uh, taken its toll on you going through there. Did it give you the extra motivation you needed though? 100%. Um, I always told my mum that I'd be a champion one day and uh, I've had my ups and downs over the years. I've, uh, I've got many a doubters and I've got a lot of family members that doubt me, um, that put me down behind my back to people. And, uh, so obviously I've proved a lot of people wrong in that, winning that fight. And, um, and when my mum passed away, uh, it just gave me that drive just to push on you. It was either not fight and then go off the rails and be stupid and and just jump in. But obviously I, I stayed in the gym. Obviously I got a good training. Joe Joe sports me a lot and got me through it. And uh, yeah, this, the, I, feel, I feel like the camp and being in the boxing gym helped me massively. Yeah, we've seen how close you are and Joe, you and Joe are today from just watching a bit yeah. of uh, your workout. And we saw a, a really nice post actually with you down at your mum's uh, resting yeah, place yeah. with all the belts. I mean, that must have been just like the best feeling just to go and show up. Yeah, definitely, mate. Uh, it was the best, yeah. And just, I always, like I said before, I, I, I always told mum that I'd be a champion one day and uh, yeah. got there and I'm just buzzing, yeah. And then obviously, you're back in camp at the minute. Um, yeah. Four weeks' time, you're going to be on the Joseph Parker, Joe Joyce homecoming fight in front of all those fans. You're yeah. a local lad. I mean, that's going to be pretty special. Of course it is, mate. Um, I'm absolutely buzzing uh, to be fighting in my own town, Manchester. Uh, and to be on such a massive card, there's some, this, it's a massive undercard. And uh, I'm just buzzing now because a lot of people from where I'm from and a lot of people from what I sell a lot of tickets and I've got a lot of people coming down from all over the place. And uh, it's, it's, it's an easy place for everyone to get there. And uh, I'm just buzzing and uh, I'm 
really thankful to everyone that's bought tickets up here to come and support me. And you're sort of settled now at super middleweight. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we, we watched your game earlier this morning and you just look like you're a little bit happier there. Is yeah. that where you're going to stick now? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm staying up at super middleweight. Uh, I don't think, I've, like, I don't want to um, jinx myself, but I don't think I've had a bad spa since being up yeah. at super middleweight and coming in the gym strong and not worrying about my weight. When I'm making 11 stone six, it's like, Camp was always about making weight. It's never, I can never really focus on my boxing, but like, do you know what I mean? And, uh, so now it's just like, I take my finger, I have to wait a bit now and just focus more on the boxing and, and enjoy it more. Yeah, you look like you're enjoying it a lot yeah. more out there, even though it's tough going. And uh, yeah. I know that uh, Kevin Marie, your manager, he's a good friend of ours as well, and uh, he nagged Joe to get you back into the yeah, gym after you left for a while. So, how yeah. much do you sort of? I credit a lot of this to, to Kevin. Oh, Ke Kevin's, a, Kevin's a massive credit to everything in my career. Um, not many people know this, but um, seven years ago, uh, I was off the rails. I was going out partying, going around with the wrong people. And um, around about that, that time, I, I, just before that, like I'd been up at Kevin sparring with a few of his lads and that, and then I just knocked it on the head boxing. That was about seven years ago. And uh, I got a message off Kevin and uh, saying that I'm a wasted talent and uh, I need to get back in. and. Uh, Come up to the gym and uh, and let's have a little like session out of him and uh, we went up there, loved it and then uh, it's not got back since. No, that's a, br a brilliant story and uh, yeah, yeah. yeah he's a good guy Kevin, yeah, he he's uh, got boxing up through his veins yeah. I think that guy. Yeah. And obviously brought you into one of probably the best gyms in the yeah. country if not the world and one of the top trainers in the world Joe Gallagher. I think Joe really cares about his boxers doesn't he? Definitely, uh, yeah 100% Joe, uh, that J Joe like like I've obviously I've had many everyone knows I've had many trainers but being back with Joe like it's, like if it, like if you put an opponent in front of the eye that I'm fighting it, the amount of things you can pick out it's, it's unbelievable and then it, it brings it all into camp and then in the last fight with Lance Clark there's a lot of things that I worked on and I did them all in the fight and every, I don't think I did one thing that Joe worked on with me and it, it was, uh, was wrong it was all perfectly right. He's pretty good, and obviously yeah. training with the likes of Anthony Crawler and uh, yeah. Scott Quigg helping you out as well. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You look around the place here, and it's full of superstars and yeah. champions. It can only help. It's just full of talent. Uh, I love it here, and uh, like I said, uh, iron sharp and iron. And since I've come back in this gym, I just, I've just been buzzing. I'm absolutely loving life. I'm talking of uh, stable mates, um, one of your. Yeah, lads, Marcus Morrison, he's taking on one of your old foes, Denzel Bentley. Yeah. You've been giving him some pointers to help out. Yeah, um, I, th I think it's going to be a good fight. Uh, yeah. I, li I, like, I like Denzel. Denzel's a good lad. Uh, but I've got no hate against Denzel. Um, we had our two fights and uh, I didn't come off the best, do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah. I, think, I think he's pretty pretty happy that you've gone up to see for middle with <laughs> Denzel, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. But I'd, like I said, it's, I think between Marcus and Denzel, it's going to be a good fight. Forward to it. Yeah, we were at um, Bolton a couple of weeks back when yep. Marcus had his warm-up fight. Yeah, looked, you know, in good shape there and, and in control of what he was yep. doing. So, I think definitely he's going to bring it on Denzel, yeah, yeah. and I think uh, he's going to be surprised. I think it's going to be a very good fight. Definitely, it's going to be a very good fight. Uh, Marcus is a good fight. Denzel's a good fight. He's about to have to keep mates so a good fight. Yeah, definitely. And of course. We've got Natasha Jonas, she just wandered in before. Yeah. Um, Joe's like, no pictures, no pictures. Um, she's, of course, in fight week. She's yeah. going to try and unify the world champions. Yeah. I mean, that's uh, some fight she's got. Well, to be honest, I've not, um, I've not uh, seen anything from the girl um, that she's fighting, but. Yeah, Patricia Burgo, she's unbeaten 15 and 0. Right, right, right. So it's going to be a good fight, then, isn't it? Um, yeah. But I think Tasha will do it. Um, she worked her ass off, and um, yeah, I'm just looking for her. I can't wait for her to do it. You going to go over and watch? Yeah, I'd like to do, yeah. Um, what is it, where is it at? It's in Liverpool, homecoming fight. Right, 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 yeah. I'd love to get over and watch. I'll uh, speak to John so you can get us in. Yeah, get me in as well. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, um, you're going back to uh, the future. You're on the Joe Joyce and Joseph Parker bill. You're going to have a, a good fight there, I'm sure. Um, like we say, lots of fans. You know, What's camp been like as a super, super middleweight now? Is it like you say more enjoyable but are you sort of accelerating now it's only four weeks to go yeah definitely i'm enjoying it a lot more um i'm just uh i'm looking forward to getting this fight away now get hopefully i get a good good opposition get a good win yeah. and then uh, i can move on to more titles and talking of moving on there's a little bit of uh, chat about you going out to america and uh, maybe having a couple of fights out there and i was sitting there doing my research last night and i'm thinking hang on there's one Canelo Alvarez that might need a fight over in uh, Britain next year. What do you reckon? You fancy that? With, with Canelo? <laughs> yeah, why not? Uh, I'll give that one a miss. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to joke. Uh, fight anyone with me, mate. Uh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? If the money's right, I'll fight anyone. Uh, 
obviously I've got a good manager, a good promoter in Frank Warren and a good trainer in Joe Gallagher. Um, I'll leave my career to them and uh, I'm sure they'll put me in the right direction. Yeah, well, it would be good to see you out in the States. I think you do yeah. really well out there. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Uh, Gabriel Rosado, whatever that's his name, isn't it? That'd be a yeah, good fight. That's the one. Um, Joe's after that fight. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm open me, I'm happy to go ahead, yeah. Looks all positive, looks really good. So, listen, we're coming towards the end, which I'm sure you're glad because you want to go and get a shower. Mm -hmm. um, but we try and finish on a little bit of uh, either or, and these are pretty easy. Some of them are quite funny, go so on. let's have a go, all right? So, Canelo and Triple G. I think Canelo. Okay. Tyson Fury versus Usyk. Mm, that's, that's a good one, but uh, go with Tyson. Okay, you'll like this one. Tommy Fury versus Jake Paul. Tommy Fury. Ooh, why? He's my mate. <laughs> <laughs> we did know that. Uh, no, this is a funny one. Joe Gallagher versus Tony Sims in a rock. In a what? In a fight. In a fight. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I can pass on that one. Oh, <laughs> he's reckoning. I reckon it's Tony you're after there. I, I reckon Joe will do it. Joe you have to say that because he's looking. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joe Joyce, Joseph Parker. Joe Joyce. Joe. Do you know what I think? It's um, a lot. Of, I think a lot of people are saying Joe Joyce. Uh, I feel like it's going to be a, a very good fight. So I think it's a 50 50 fight, but uh, obviously, with me and Joe Joyce being in the same stable, I'll go with Joe Joyce. Okay, and Joyce. Okay. Um, Caswell versus Taylor, which I think is going to be announced this Caswell week. Taylor, uh, yeah, definitely. I'll go with um, Carol after, after the last fight. Yeah. Okay, there's another fun one Crawler versus Quig. <laughs> Come on, you've got to answer this. Uh, I'll pass on that one. No, you've got to answer this. They've told me you have to Colin answer this. Quick. I don't know, it'd be a good fight, that. It's, yeah, that's, even now. I don't know. I'd have to get him to have a spa and they'd ask me. Oh, he's sitting on the fence. They said you'd do that. Um, and then finally, the biggest fight of the year, uh, Chris Eubank versus Conor Ben. That's, um, I'm hearing about uh, Conor Ben, um, Chris Eubank's got a uh, Doing that silly weight, so I don't know. With the, obviously, with the weight, like if, if you bank full fully weight drained, probably gonna have been, but I don't, I don't think you bank stupid enough to like, do anything to silly like that. So I, I go with you, Chris Eubank, definitely. Okay, well, listen, there's some good answers there, and you sat on the fence on the one they said you would. Uh, well, listen, Mark, thank you for your time, yeah. appreciate it, thank and uh, we look forward to seeing what you're going to do after yeah. your fight uh, in a few weeks' time. Brilliant, thank mate. You. Thank you. Thank you.